In two years' time, Japan plans to begin a 40-year process of releasing more than 1.2 million tons of radioactive wastewater from the Fukushima plant into the Pacific Ocean. It's always legitimate to have concerns. I mean, we have been using the oceans as a giant garbage can for millennia. One of the things that I looked at specifically for Fukushima is where it sits relative to the currents in the Pacific Ocean. And it sits right next to a current that pulls it right off into the North Pacific seas. Oceanographer and geologist Kat Ruiz is constantly examining the chemistry of California waters and the life it supports. She says if the Fukushima water release begins, how much reaches the California coast will depend on how it's dispersed. There are other elements that exist naturally in the water and unnaturally from past uh, nuclear testing that are also distributed throughout the oceans. And so the next question is, well, comparing this to what's already there, are we adding a needle to a haystack or are we adding a whole nother haystack? Professor Wee says she's neither for or against the release of that radioactive water, but she says it's important to continue to ask questions. She says that wastewater will have a very identifiable signature, so heavy monitoring will be vital. University of California Davis professor of oceanography John Larger says if it's going to happen, the release needs to be done carefully and transparently. And release maybe a little bit if that's the way you're going to go, and then track it and see what happens and see if it really does dilute enough, as your models suggest, uh, or not. So it becomes an experiment. Uh, that way, it's, it's number one, a responsible way to do it. And number two, at least learn something from it, which might help the ocean in the long run. But the stakes may be higher for the U.S. state of Alaska, where scientists say contaminants could find their way sooner and in higher concentrations. Alaskan marine conservation biologist Richard Steiner just returned from a week-long trip where he studied everything from sea lions to whales to seabirds. All of those organisms will be dosed with Fukushima radioactive wastewater. And it, it saddened me and it also angered me. We recorded these Fukushima radionuclides in Alaska uh, about five or six years after the disaster occurred. They are here. They went in the Ar Arctic Ocean. Um, there was concern about the, them showing up in seafood. It did. Steiner says the wastewater contains more than 50 hazardous radionuclides, some with half-lives of hundreds and even thousands of years. What really concerns us is the wastewater treatment system they have there right now, what they call the advanced liquid processing system, really is not up to the job, and I think they know it. They have to now retreat over 800,000 tons of the tank water, the wastewater, that they've already treated through their system, which is a a clear admission that the system isn't working. Steiner believes the international community should help Japan build more storage tanks to hold the water for several more decades and treat it with the best technology available. But Steiner and all the experts we talk to admit there aren't any good options. I think that that's the kind of thinking that one has to make before you choose your energy source. The way we handle the waste and the way we handle the contamination, the way we handle its impact on the environment should really be up at the front in our decision making. Mark New, CGTN, San Mateo, California.